Vladimir Putin has no health problems and his regular checkups at the Central Clinical Hospital are just a standard examination. Dmitry Peskov, the press secretary of the head of state, said this in an interview with TASS. Absolutely, we are talking about regular dispensarizations, he said in response to a related question. At a meeting with the government, Putin mentioned that he regularly undergoes medical checkups at a central clinic hospital. He said this in the context of discussing the seasonal flu vaccination being conducted across the country. The head of the Russian Federation noted that doctors at the Central Clinical Hospital recommended using domestic drugs for vaccination. In the spring of 2023, Captain Gleb Karakulov of the Federal Guard Service, who has left Russia, said in an interview with the Dossier Center that Putin was treated at the Central Clinical Hospital in April 2022 after Ukraine refused to surrender and the Russian army was forced to retreat from Kiev. Karakulov also noted that Putin undergoes regular medical checkups, and once the pandemic begins, everyone working with him must be quarantined and given PCR tests almost several times a day. In addition to his health, Putin, according to Karakulov, is worried about his safety. For example, during his trip to the summit in Kazakhstan in 2022, Putin insisted on installing special communications in a bomb shelter rather than in his office or meeting room, as he had done previously. The Federal Guard Service officer explains this as a manifestation of paranoia. He also noted that Putin always takes with him on foreign trips an intercom cabin, a special 2.5-meter high cube from which secure telephone conversations can be conducted. The British tabloid The Daily Mirror, citing a source in the FSB, previously reported that Putin allegedly has a severe form of rapidly progressing cancer. He suffers from loss of vision, headaches, and trembling in his hands. Similar information appeared in an article by New Lines magazine in which an unnamed Russian oligarch claimed that the president has serious health problems related to blood cancer. In 2024, Ukraine has carried out more than 7,000 strikes on the territory of Russia, according to CNN. It is noted that the most distant impact reached more than 1,700 kilometers from the Ukrainian border. Long-range drone strikes were aimed at military facilities, such as ammunition depots, as well as infrastructure facilities, such as oil refineries. CNN received exclusive access to one of the Ukrainian units of long-range drones, which is part of the main directorate of intelligence of the Ministry of Defense. Two people from the unit had the right to speak with journalists using only their call signs, Serge, the commander of the long-range unmanned aerial vehicle division, and Vector, the unit commander. Serge said that he personally controlled more than 500 drone strikes on the territory of Russia since its full-scale invasion of Ukraine. CNN representatives spent two days traveling around Ukraine together with the unit, preparing to launch more than 100 drones on the night of September 29 to strike Russia. At that time, one of the targets was a military arsenal in the village of Kotlobin in the Volgograd region of the Russian Federation. 
or rather, a train loaded with recently delivered Iranian missiles. When the Ukrainian drones were heading to Kotlaban, Serge told CNN, we constantly make the enemy think about what they did in February 2022. They must understand that we are getting stronger every day and we are getting closer to our victory and their defeat. The first satellite images of the ammunition warehouse in Kotlebani after the strikes of Ukraine then recorded burned areas near the arsenal, but contained little evidence of strong explosions inside, which gave grounds for media assertions that the strike was amiss. CNN was also able to independently confirm, thanks to its own sources, that there was indeed a direct strike on the arsenal in Kotlebani. The CNN article also notes that long-range drone attacks are becoming an increasingly noticeable part of the Russian-Ukrainian war. While the ground war has become more exhausting, the air war is gaining momentum, and the main development is taking place in unmanned aerial vehicles. Despite the Russian air defense, the effectiveness of the attack can increase to 95%, with the permission of the USA to use Western weapons for strikes deep into Russia.